Welcome to this mesh matching tutorial. My name is Alex and today we'll be going over how to match the mesh between two mesh entities using moldx 3D. So uh, we get this question a lot about how to match the mesh between two entities, uh, especially for insert deflection. Uh, usually we have to have coincident nodes between the mold insert here and the part. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the surface mesh and then we're going to match the two. So it is actually quite a uh, simple procedure, but this could, this procedure can be applied to pretty much every situation out there when there's a mold insert and a part. All right, so the first step here is I'm going to go in and seed my part and my insert at the same time. Very, very important that you seed both of them at the same time. So I'm going to select both entities and ask if I want to reset, reset the initial mesh size. You always click yes. You want to make sure that both of these objects have exactly the same mesh size, so that the nodes or the triangle size uh, or the mesh element size, however you want to think about it, you want to make sure that these are as close together as possible. Now, they obviously, because the mesher creates the mesh randomly on both services, the bottom surface of the insert, in this case, the top insert of the part, they will never be matching right away. However, uh, getting them as close as possible will enable us to uh, match the mesh much more fluently. The first step here is to create a similar global mesh size between the two. And I'm going to follow the Goldilocks method. If you haven't joined one of our standard trainings, I highly recommend you to do so where we go over this Goldilocks method. And uh, again, the most important thing here is to make sure that both objects have similar node seedings. I can't stress that enough. All right, once we have similar node seedings, we're going to go into generate. And we're just going to mesh the surface mesh of the part and the mold insert. Uh, we don't really want to do the solid mesh yet because we haven't yet matched these two. And by default, the mesher will actually ignore the matching between the two objects. The reason for that is typically because uh, the heat transfer across this boundary can be done pretty easily with non-matching mesh. When we're concerned with the deflection of the mold insert, that's when we need to match the two. Uh, because the deformation of the nodes on the part need to match the deformation of the nodes on the insert in order to do some sort of mechanical deformation that is a requirement from the solver. All right, so moving forward here, so we're going to uh, tack the service mesh. I just left clicked on the service mesh components here. Uh, that will stop the solver after the service mesh is completed. And we'll generate the service mesh pretty easily. Now we can see that the, the triangle size or the, the node seating was in fact the same. And the size of the triangles, therefore, are pretty similar. Now to match these two, we have to do what's called a copy paste. So a copy paste is only accessible through the fix mesh function. So we're going to go into fix mesh. That allows access to some of our mesh, uh, our mesh repair functions. All right, and the copy paste function is over towards the right side of this interface. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to copy the service mesh, the bottom service mesh from the insert onto the part, and then we're going to delete the elements on the part to kind of account for those uh, those elements that we just created, and then we're going to match the two. All right, so we're going to use copy paste. We're going to select the surface mesh of reference, which is going to be the bottom surface of our insert which can be a little bit tough to get to if your part is still there. So I'm going to hide my part. I'm going to highlight the bottom mesh of our insert, the one in contact with our part surface. All right, it's S for the elements that I want to copy. So I'm just going to box select everything, check mark, and then select the object to assign it to. So I'm going to bring back my part and select it. You'll notice that it actually selects the object itself, the solid object, not the mesh. Um, so it's actually copying that entire mesh that we just selected it's copying it to this object all right so i'm going to press the green check mark here and we see that we get a bunch of overlapping elements which is expected uh, if i hide my insert you'll see that there are in fact two mesh entities there's the one that we just copied and there's the original mesh so our goal now is to delete all of the elements that are overlapping and then we're going to fill in the space between the, the matched mesh or the copied mesh and the old mesh. All right, so essentially uh, from this red line out to this blue line, we're gonna be creating new mesh. That's the goal here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is use the delete function, not the delete button, very, very, very important. We're gonna use the delete function so that we only get a portion of these elements. Only the elements in blue are the ones that we're worried about here. 
So we're just going to use some of our box select functions to grab a majority of the mesh. And then I can use control box select to remove the elements I didn't want to get rid of. And then if I accidentally get rid of additional elements, then I can just use shift select to reselect those. Or you can use a box select as well. Both of them work. Once you're happy with your elements, then you can press the green check mark. And we see in this case, I did leave one behind, which is definitely a common scenario. So we can just go back into the delete function, select that last element, and press the green check mark. Okay, so now we have the matched mesh. One very important aspect of this is that we cannot touch the nose on the matched mesh. We can't move these, we can't delete these. They are kind of fixed in place. Or you, you need to consider them as fixed in place in order to maintain the matching between the part and the insert. So what we need to do is essentially fill in this gap with a new layer of mesh. And the way to do that typically is through a, a method called bridging. So right now, if I were to try and fill in the hole, theoretically, and I go to select my closed edge loop, it's just going to select the free edges around the circumference of the matched mesh. The other side on the old mesh is also its own free edge loop. So what we need to do is create a bridge so these two loops are connected. All right, so to bridge, we are going to create two elements. One of those elements is gonna have its base on the matched mesh. And the other element is gonna have its base on the old mesh. And to do that, we're going to use the sketch function. All right, so sketch allows us to essentially just draw these triangles, and it's going to use three points, making sure that I have my mesh snap activated. I'm going to select my first point, my second point, so that I create my, my triangle's base on the new mesh or the matched mesh, and the third point is going to be over on my old mesh. The second element is going to be adjacent to this, except it's going to have its base on the old mesh and connect to the new mesh, right? So I'm going to go first point, second point to create the base on the old mesh, and then the third point to create the point of the triangle on the new mesh. So you can see here we have two triangles, one with the base on the new mesh, one with the base on the old mesh. Very, very important because when I go to finish this function and press enter, it's going to create this bridge between the two uh, open surfaces and it's going to merge both of these loops of free edges into one single loop of free edge so you can see when i go into fill hole now when i select my loop of free edges it selects both loops because they're merged into one so now that we have this whole loop selected we can press the green check mark and you'll see a bunch of nodes pop up around the free edge now I recommend to just kind of work your way around this free edge. Don't just press enter and, and allow Moldex to do it automatically. Because sometimes the complex interactions, especially when the mesh is this thin most of the time, it will cause some sort of meshing issues that might be a pain to fix. So working your way around this way, in this case, I'm just going around the four corners. It allows us to create a nice matched mesh between the two without any sorts of errors. So now if I bring my mold insert back, let's say I just hide these two mesh entities. We can see that the mesh on the part is actually exactly the same as the mesh on the insert. You can see that there's no change between the two. So these two are perfectly matched. And now we can go through the process of creating the solid mesh. So I'll press the, I'll exit out of the, the fixed surface mesh and then we'll generate everything else. Now, when we create the runners, you'll see that the mesh is changed on the part. But even if there's a change on the part, moldx 3D will not dissociate the mesh between the mesh that you've already matched. So if there's a gate really close to the mold insert, you don't have to worry about the mesh being rearranged because the uh, mold x 3D will not do that. All right, and those are the four basic components that you need to match the mesh. The first one is making sure that your node seating is the same between the two objects. The second one is copy pasting the 
surface mesh of the smaller object to the larger object, then you need to delete the surface mesh on the larger object where there's an overlap. And then you need to fill in the hole between those two meshes using the bridging method that I mentioned earlier. Thank you for watching this advanced meshing tutorial. My name's Alex Baker and go beyond simulation with Moldex 3D.